Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is October the 25th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Happy Friday, happy Fry, yay. Hopefully this energy catches you on the day. I know I'm I'm definitely podcasting later and all that. So usually it's probably gonna catch you on like a Saturday, but like hopefully you still have that energy. And if you're not listening on the weekend, that's a-okay. That's fine. Hopefully you still feel the Friday power inside of you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I'm in a good mood, I'm in a good place, I feel like overall um work went well uh you know busy but not too bad um let's see here also just the thing I kind of just realized that I noted like kind of throughout my day had a lot of good talks this week you know I (laughs) believe it or not I'm actually a big yapper when I'm not podcasting but at the same time I'm also very like uh solitary you know I'm by myself a lot I'm pretty lonely you know so it's nice that when I when I can kind of like click through the week in my head and realize you know what we had a a lot of good times talking to people you know throughout the week um at the crusher you know what I mean uh just random asides uh I got political a decent amount which I do off and on you know but definitely as we're like 11 days towards the election you know, the countdown's really going. You're hearing a lot of opinions. I'm asking people like, hey, you're going to vote? Who are you going to vote for? Oh, you're not voting. Okay, all right. Oh, you're voting for, for you know, the orange guy. All right. You're, you're voting for, you know, RoboCop. Okay, hell yeah, you know. So it, it's been interesting to get the perspectives and, and talk to people. Um, a, a random thing that's happened a, a decent amount this week, talk two times about Terrifier with people. Um, I've never even seen the movie. I, I knew I knew Bo Diddley about Terrifier one, two, or three, and uh, or All Hallows Eve, and now I know all of these things. Okay, I, you know I I know kill scenes in this in this movie. I've never even watched it. Not not gonna watch it. I'm not a scary guy. I'm not a horror guy. I know it's October, but you know it's just not really my thing. Um, as you know, most of my listeners know. But that being said, it was cool to learn. Like, I don't mind spoilers a lot of times. And uh, especially when I'm so detached from a medium, it kind of is interesting to kind of learn about, you know, a character, about a plot. And, you know, it's like, okay, it's a nice, easier way to digest this thing as opposed to me sitting down and watching it. And it's nice to see my friends, like, light up and talk about things that they they like and they care about. So even if I don't know anything about it, I will let them go. And I'm just like, yeah, cool, awesome. And, you know, it, it... honestly will usually at least make me like you know want to look it up or care a little bit more right so you know that, that those are a couple of uh interesting little tidbits that I've kind of been um you know yapping about with my friends and coworkers and stuff so that's been cool that's been nice uh let's see let's talk about food let's get to the food corner why not uh last night I had burger, hot dogs, fries, and onion rings. It was really good. It was really yummy. I also used a little bit more of the crab dip before I said, you know what? We're good here. Um, Still yummy. Still good. I just realized that, you know, I don't need to finish this whole thing. You know, I've gotten the crab dip experience, and it's time to dip out. So, you know, overall, good solid meal. We love that for, um, you know, a Thursday night. So, um, but yeah, here we are on Friday, and we're going to go ahead and do our startup and get into some news. I would still say that I am sick. I know maybe some people still care about Snifflegate. Usually when I'm completely better, I just stop ta- I stop talking about it. You know, you just know. But um, yeah, you know, I woke up definitely sore throat. I was like, <sighs> but especially during this time of the year, my nose will clog up a lot during the night. And then I'll wake up and kind of um, drain out, if you will. Um, so that's good, you know, that, that overall, that's kind of how today went, I'm still coughing, which is still annoying, but, you know, overall, didn't really jam up my day, didn't really stop me, so that was good, and, uh, yeah, you know, of course, I did the gym, and, uh, here we are, so, yeah, we covered, like, all the bases, there you go, you know, good for a Friday, huh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. oh, also, a little a fun tip that also made this day really sweet, I pretty much spent half of my day just watching, um, my favorite card game tournament, like, at work I love doing that that's like my favorite pleasure is being paid while I'm watching YouTube and just like I would have been doing this at home and now I'm just doing it while I mash cardboards like it's it's lit 
I guess one caveat, I'll, I'll, t- I'll say one bad thing, one thorn of my, my day, and it's actually been kind of going on throughout the week. I mentioned it maybe once this week, but the, the, the trash, the garbage compactor had been going down every single day. There's always been, there's always been an issue with it, whether I mentioned it or not on the pod, but we would get through it. Like the maintenance guys would like just like bang on it, you know, for about 15, 30 minutes. And then I'd ask them, hey, is it good? And they'd be like, it's good. Or they'd be like, hey, you can kind of use it. And it's like, okay. So we've been dealing with that. It's been kind of jamming us up, but not too bad. And then we actually got the guys to come through, I think a second or third time. (coughs) Excuse me. And um, looks like they finally did some stuff with it. It was one of those weird times where the, um, the guy who was fixing it kind of just came over to the nearest guy, which was me, and proceeded to explain what he was up to. And I was like, oh, cool. Yes. Awesome. All right. Sure. Like, I'm, I'm just hitting him with NPC dialogue because I don't know, man. I just pressed the button. And I'm, I'm right now, all I know is when I press the button, it's not working. So he's saying, you, you're saying you fixed it? Awesome. I, I, you're great. Love you, man. I'll, you know, thank you. And so, you know, cool. It was good. Glad we got it worked out. And really, it didn't jam up the day too bad. So, um, and even someone came through and helped out. I think they were trying to kill time because they were from a different department. And um, I know I'm explaining way too much about my job right now. But um, they were um, killing some time. And they're like, hey, I can do all this trash for you. And I was like, you're an angel. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, that was dope. Um, yeah, let's let's get into this startup. Why not? Ooh wee. Okay. Let's start at the top. Technically, technically it's some good news. <coughs> A bit complex for some good news, I'd say, but you know, let's uh whew, let's start here from Yahoo News. Biden apologized to Native Americans for boarding school boarding school abuses. The indigenous community is grateful, but says it's not enough. Native Americans across um, Indian uh, Indian country shared mixed emotions this week after President Biden apologized for the U.S. government's role in running Native American boarding schools across the country. During the 150-year practice at more than 400 schools where the U.S. partnered with various religious institutions, indigenous children were separated from their families and stripped of their language and customs in an effort to assimilate into white culture. There were also documented cases of abuse and death. Secretary of the Interior Deb Holland, who is a member of the Laguna Pueblo tribe and has been instrumental in bringing these issues to a wider audience through her Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative, applauded Biden's move. I'm so grateful to Biden for acknowledging this terrible era for, of our nation's past, Holland, whose grandparents were, t- uh, were taken to boarding schools, posted on X. And I got to say, um, she's the reason. Like, if there's anyone to celebrate, it's not Biden. Fuck Biden. I put his name on there because it was just easier to do for a fucking title or headline. This really isn't about him. He's just the guy. This is just the administration that finally decided to say, God damn it, we are at least going to say sorry. Like, once again, this is a sorry that isn't accompanied accompanied by any action, which is important, and we're going to get to it in a second. But it is at least something, but it really doesn't, it's not because of him in my mind. It's not because of the administration, except for if we're talking about, once again, Deb Holland, someone who is like, hey, I am now in a place where I can really use my voice and do something. So I'm going to at least try to do this. And they really made that push, it seems. And um, I feel like if anyone deserves any credit out of this shit um, from the Biden regime or whatever, it's Deb Holland. So there you go. Um, Let's go ahead and move along. Um, I think I want to get to, um, boop, 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 boop. yeah, uh, the, the man himself, old Joe. I'm not going to do an impression. Um, it's an honor, a genuine honor to right a wrong, to chart a new path, he said. I formally apologize as president of the United States of America for what we did. I formally apologize. It's long overdue. Um, But yeah, let's continue. However, indigenous leaders and citizens across the country stress that this is only the first step. 
This is one of the most historic days in history of Indian country, and an apology of this size must be followed by real action. Nick Thielson, who belongs to the o Aglaga or Aglala, Aglala, we're going to say Aglala, Aglala uh, Lakota Nation, and is president and CEO of the indigenous rights organization Indian Collective, told Yahoo News. Tilson believes that there are specific actionable steps that need to accompany any apology. For him, that means passing the U.S. Truth and Healing Commission bill uh, in Congress, rescinding medals of honor f uh, for those who participated in the Battle of Wounded Knee, releasing longest living indigenous political prisoner in American history, Leonard Peltier, who is also a boarding school survivor, and unprecedented investment in indigenous language and education, which I'm sure the ignorant would be like, oh, so you want reparations? It's like, sure, well, whatever, man. Like people want what it is due. Like if you want to actually do an apology, I agree. You need to match that with fucking actions. Like at the end of the day, that is very key here. I know, uh, I think I kind of missed that happened throughout the week. What was it King Charles, I believe went to Australia. He got heckled and uh, as he rightfully should, and um, essentially came through and was like, yeah, you know, it's good to be back. I'm obviously highly paraphrasing. I really didn't look too much into this shit. But he did everything but really apologize. It was more or less just a vibes tour to kind of like mend vibes and be cool. And, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you know, I know I'm a new guy back in. You know, I'm here. I'm just saying hello. But it, it's crazy because y'all know how I feel about the monarchy. That's a whole other fucking issue. But... Uh, <sighs> I don't know. And now I'm blending two different things because him not even saying sorry, King Charles is crazy. I, it's crazy that the, the, the fucking monarchy, the royals kind of just have this ability to be able to go to these places and like participate in the ceremony and have people literally glaze the fuck out of them. Because most of the Australian, I don't want to say most of the Australians, but there's a good chunk of all the Australian people that were like, yeah, yeah, we love this. It's such a vibe. Good to see you, old sausage fingers. But it's like, dude, like this guy's part of your problem. He's not helping you. This fucking Tony the Tiger head ass motherfucker isn't doing anything for you. Well, well why? Like, you don't, you shouldn't want to be a part of this shit. But like, kind of like when it, when it comes to Ireland, I know I'm jumping all across issues here, but there's just, there's less of an initiative right now to really say, hey, let's break ties. Let's be independent. Let's like cut the fucking monarchy out of our shit. Fucking separate ourselves from these motherfuckers, these losers. And, and more of a focus on like, hey, how do we get the economy better? How do we get like actual problems solved? Shit like that. Not that this isn't a problem. Not that colonialism and all that fucking ills that come with it isn't a problem. Obviously, it's a very fucking big problem. It's crazy that we have to deal with said problem in 2024. But anyway, um, back to, you know, Biden's apology and the things at, at hand. I am glad to see him do it just like i'm glad to see any president come out and, and and do these kind of things now i think about it has trump ever did he ever in his four years issue any kind of like a uh, national apology or anything like that i feel like that goes against his strongman vibe i don't think he he did to my knowledge but if you do know if you're a political degen and you you have the answer to that or you googled it and because i'm i don't have the time i don't have the energy i don't care not that much uh let me know by all means, sound off in the comments or something. Um, but yeah, I know Obama did a similar thing, but it's, it's a similar issue, right? Where it's like, hey, man, that's really cool. I, I think, what was it with Obama? He did, um, hey, sorry that we put Japanese people in internment camps. Yeah, man, that is crazy. That is fucked up. Was that really followed up by, with anything, though? I don't believe so. Um, but hey, you know, th there is a level of there's a thought that counts here, and I do think that, that plays to some people. But once again, I, I highly agree with the statement of that needs to match actions. And, um, you know, from there, I know I just kind of ambled around. I literally went to three fucking countries with this conversation on. Uh, but, you know, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next bump, move on to the next thing. Um, we got to talk. We got to, we're once again on the campaign trail, kind of, sort of, not really. Um, from ABC. Chinese hackers believed to have targeted Trump, Vance, uh, cell phones, sources. I don't know why I read the whole title like that. Maybe I shouldn't do that, but I feel like that's good. In case you really want to, like, actually source check me, you can literally just say what I said back, right? So that's why I always say it like a dumb, stilted robot. Um, anyway, Chinese hackers are believed to have targeted cell phones used by former President Donald Trump and his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, Ohio's very own. Yuck. Anyway, according to sources familiar with the matter, 
The Trump Vans campaign was made aware this week that Trump and Vans are among several people whose phone numbers are believed to have been targeted and potentially compromised, the sources said. It's not clear what, if any, access was gained to the devices. Investigators are working to determine that information, uh, the sources told ABC News. People affiliated with the Harris Walls campaign were also targeted, a source familiar with the campaign told ABC News. Uh, the FBI and Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is also known as CISA, uh, that's cool, uh, related a statement on the hacks but did not name the campaign. However, sources told ABC News that the targets were the Trump and Vance campaign. Um, I also love that, like, Trump, like, the, the Trump campaign team, like, finds a way to, like, kind of make this about, like, see if, like, if Biden and Harris had actually, like, done something about Iran or China and their interference in the election, then this wouldn't be happening. So, like, really, this is, like, their fault. And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys talking about, dude? They always try to curve the bullet. And I always have my gumpy ass fucking motherfucking maintenance guys trying to come and tell me fucking Fox News party lines and shit or like just shit that they read or saw. And I'm like, bro, you realize you're selling someone fucking vaporware here. Like, I'm not that stupid. Believe it or not. I know I'm king of the trash, but I actually know some things here. Get this shit on my face. And they just kind of want to move on to the next thing that they want to shill to me. Uh, but hey, we move, we do what we do, you know, um, is this, is this big news? No, but like, you know, it's just something on the campaign that we can talk about. Why not? I mean, there's a lot of things that are, are happening, pipping and bopping, but I don't want to like bother y'all about this shit. Uh, the, once again, the real DGens know everything that is happening here. I, I really don't want to like bog y'all down with like poll talk. I, I, I've looked into the matrix. It is dark and it is not fun. Um, and I'm not going to really bore y'all with this shit. Let's just kind of keep cruising until we get to November 5th. And then we can really talk about this shit on the 6th. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to some new breaking news other than, you know, you know, China hacks, election interference or whatever the fuck. I, I still don't even know what the information they might have, like, like, what were they, what, did they do anything with it or whatever? I don't, I don't fucking know. So we'll see. I'll keep you posted, I guess. That's what I should say, right? If we find out there was any, any real juice or meat out of this shit, then, you know, I'll be back. I'll be back. Anyway, from the Associated Press, Grammy winning rapper Lil Durk charged with orchestrating 2022 Los Angeles killing. Grammy Award winning rapper Lil Durk has been char or has been arrested in Florida on federal charges that he paid for the attempted 2022 revenge killing of rapper Quando Rondo um, at a Los Angeles gas station, a shooting that resulted in the death of Rondo's cousin. Durk, 32, is charged with conspiracy to commit murder for hire in the slaying of Savaya. Uh, I'm getting the same wrong. I'm sorry. Savaye's Robinson. Uh, Sav oh, wow. So Sav Savaye Robinson, 24, who was gunned down on August 19th, 2022, according to the an FBI affidavit released Friday. Five other members of Dirk's Chicago-based rap collective, Only the Family, or OTF. Have been arrest have also been arrested, and at least two more arrests may be forthcoming, according to court documents that have been filed. Dirk was arrested Thursday night in South Florida as he attempted to flee the country. The FBI says Dirk, whose real name is Dirk Banks, won a Grammy earlier this year for best melodic rap performance uh, for his song "All My Life," which featured J Cole. He has also been nominated three times and was featured uh, was a feature performer on Drake's Laugh Now, Cry Later. Now, I got to say, I had, I'm had i not a big Lil Durk fan. I haven't really listened to him too much unless it was a feature. I literally remembered that I listened to him on Laugh Now, Cry Later, and I was like, okay. And then I figured, all right, uh, you know, for the episode, I'll listen to All My Life. Why not? Not the biggest J. Cole fan, so, you know, whatever. This kind of was not on my radar. It's a fine song. But, um, yeah the 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 whole situation with um was it king von being killed i did not know this this facet here which was um a relevant thing that we are going to get to but um i'm going to read this quote first the shooting occurred in the open at a gas station at a busy intersection endangering many others in the area 
Um, violent gun crime of this sort is devastating to our community and we will have a zero tolerance for those who um, perpetrate such callous acts of violence. Uh, Strada, who, um, do, 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 uh, Martin Estrada, who is a U.S. attorney for Los Angeles, um, who called, uh, the shooting a cold-blooded murder. It was a murder. Uh, let's see here. Let me scroll ahead. Yeah, let me get to the King Von part. I'm sorry. According to Cochran's affidavit and other federal court records, the shooting stems from the November 2020 slaying of OTF rapper King Von. 26 at an at a, mm, sorry at an Atlanta nightclub after Vaughn and Rondo got into a fight. Records say a friend of Rondo's pulled a gun and shot Vaughn several times, killing him. Vaughn, whose real name was Davon Bennett, had two hit singles, Crazy Story and Took Her to the O. Authorities say Dirk made it known that he would pay a bounty to anyone who killed Rondo, whose real name is Tequan Bowman. Almost two years later, a murder plot quickly came together, Cochran wrote. On August 18th, 2022, Dirk's associates learned that Rondo was staying at a Los Angeles hotel. That day, DeAndre Wilson, Keith Jones, David Lindsay, Asa Houston, and a fifth unnamed suspect flew from Chicago to San Diego and then drove to Los Angeles using funds provided by Dirk, Cochran said. That day, Dirk allegedly tested, texted an associate arranging the flights, don't book no flights under no names involved with me. Cochran said uh, there is video evidence that Dirk was staying at a house in San Fernando Valley that day. Which I feel like this part right here is really important to highlight because from here, you can literally connect the dots from Dirk to the killers who are going to commit this murder that we're going to get into. Um, or we've, you know, more or less already been talking about that took place at the gas station. And I feel like this is important to mention because you have this kind of case, which I kind of feel like is almost damn near open and shut. Like, I can obviously understand the motivations and reasonings why Lil Durk would want to do this shit, and I think a lot of people do in the hip-hop community, but at the end of the day, yes, this is a murder-for-hire plot. Like, in the situation where we're talking about Young Thug, where I have a lot more problems and beef and grievance here, is because you literally, it's held together by the Rico situation, and the leaps and bounds that the prosecution is trying to go through to be like, well, you like rapped about this shit. And then there was like killing that happens. And we're saying that that's enough to connect the dots here. And it's like, no, I do not think that you're proving your case as a state here. And I also feel like the state is kind of saying, or the judge is saying like, yeah, if you guys don't actually get to the fucking point here, I'm about to call a mistrial. So that's a bit of side news there. But I do feel like that there is glaring differences in how that case, that trial is going as opposed to maybe how this is going to go with Lil Durk. Because, once again, you can really connect the dots and do an A to Z and say, well, yeah, dude, you did it. Like, yeah, you said, hey, like, I'm I'm over here doing other shit, and then I'm later going to go and, you know, hit this country, that country, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But, like, we can connect the dots and say that you set this murder up. And then you're later going to set up payment for these guys, which is also another, you know, death knell in this situation that's like, yeah, you're very implicated. So, uh, but let's continue. Um, let's see here. That day, Dirk, I already read that part. Let me move ahead. Once arriving in Los Angeles, the OTF members met Kayon Grant, who had flown there on a private jet. Grant, a top OTF associate, got the men hotel rooms, purchased four ski masks, and attained two luxury sedans, court records say. Grant allegedly gave Jones, uh, Lindsay, and a third unnamed suspect guns, including one that had been converted into a machine gun. Now, excuse me, I might just be reaching out air here, but like before I kind of went on here, I was going through my day, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I saw a highlight that names Grant as maybe one of the people that might have gotten uh, arrested previously or apprehended previously and maybe flipped. I'm not 100% sure there. I might be wrong on that. But that would kind of make sense because it's like, ooh, if you get the guy who, once again, facilitated all this shit and is now going to sing like a canary, once again, you have damning evidence here. This isn't just some guy who was running rogue and doing whatever the fuck he wanted and had a beef and then did some other shit. 
Like, this is, once again, a clear act. There's a clear reasoning here. There's a through line that everyone can kind of fucking follow and say, oh, I see how this all happened. I see how this unfolded. Uh, let's see. The next day, the group allegedly followed Rondo and Ron, uh, Robinson as they drove a Cadillac Escalade to a Los Angeles marijuana dispensary, a West Hollywood clothing store, and then a gas station across the street from the Beverly Center. There, Houston allegedly parked his car behind the station so Jones, Lindsay, and an unnamed defendant could ambush Rondo. They got out and opened fire, killing Robinson, who was standing outside the Escalade but missing Rondo. The, invite, uh, sorry, the indictment and news story about uh, the shooting say. The suspects then went to an In-N-Out hamburger stand. I would like to go to In-N-Out one day. Uh, not to conclude a murder, but to eat a burger. You know, of course, a juicy burger. Um, where they discussed payment with Grant and then flew home to Chicago from San Diego. Cochran and uh, other documents say, Wilson allegedly paid Jones and Lindsay an undisclosed amount. Grant, Jones, Lindsay, Wilson, and Houston were arrested Thursday in Chicago on conspiracy to commit murder for higher charges. No attorney information was immediately available for those men in court records. After their arrest, Cochran wrote, Dirk booked two flights to South Florida airports, one to Dubai and one to Switzerland. He then booked uh, a private flight to Italy, but was arrested in Miami uh, before he could board it. Um, they get into a bunch of history in terms of like charges with uh, Dirk and King Von, um, but um, I don't really want to get into that. I've already kind of talked pretty long here. I already feel like I'm losing my voice, um, but I will definitely keep you posted on this trial. Um, it is uh, definitely going to be interesting, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but like I said, I mean, you can kind of see my vibe is a bit different on this as opposed to, once again, a young thug situation where I'm like, look, maybe he did it. Maybe he fucking didn't, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, I do not feel like the state has a real case and they're just trying to make it stick with, once again, you might just get hit with the Rico bullshit. Like that's not, do it better. Like this is a, a whole person's life on the line one way or another. And yes, we all want justice, but like. The whole part of this whole fucking system is to get it right and to prove it. You know what I mean? This is supposed to be the whole part of it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you might as well be a whole fucking regime. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, um, we got one more thing I wanted to cover before I close it out for the day. It was some news I couldn't cram in yesterday, um, but I'm like, fuck it. We're going to get it in tonight. So let me take a full break. I need to get some water. I'm parched, quite parched, and then, you know, get around my basis. Um, but then we'll go ahead and close it out. We're going to take it to Baltimore. Bit of an update. Crash out, if you will. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh. Ooh. One of my... Um, Things that I, I weirdly enjoy because I'm, I'm I'm a big podcast head. I love lis listening to podcasts. It's what I usually do when I'm not watching, you know, Match of the Gathering tournaments and whatnot. Um, is I love when I'm listening to a podcast and I hear the podcaster's um, stomach rumble. Like I hear them like a bodily noise, like not a burp, not a cough, like, but literally like you just hear their stomach rumble. And I always find that so cute and endearing. And obviously they do not want that sound to be in there. It's very embarrassing. Um, but hopefully, well, maybe not hopefully, obviously I'm a nightmare for anyone who has any kind of like, like, ooh, bad audio issues. I'm a, I'm a living boogie man. I'm oogie boogie to you. But like, hopefully a person who just loves to shoot the shit and just really enjoy listening to a person yap, you can appreciate what I appreciate, right? Where you just hear a little, little rumbly noise. It's like, oh, look at Winnie the Pooh. Oh, he needs to eat. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm real loose tonight. Full disclosure, the pregame. <coughs> well, a little bit. <coughs> a little bit more extensive. I'm sorry. I know I'm, I'm holding the audience hostage right now. Oh. 
Ooh. All right. Hopefully I'm more interesting than the Joker too. You know, that's, that's my hope. That is my, my hope. And I better not hear anyone say otherwise. Actually, this is worse than the Joker too. Cause I'll block you. I'll ban you. I'll send you to the shadow realm. <laughs> I refuse to accept that. I, I barely sing. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm no Lady Gaga, but like, I'm also not Lady Gaga <laughs> in a movie. So don't, don't play me like that. Anyway, last story. Let's, let's go from ABC news. Operators of vessel that destroyed Baltimore's Key Bridge to pay nearly 102 million. The Department of Justice. Also, I want to add here, so I don't see anybody in my comments trying to fucking correct me. Um, this is only the only a um, civil type of lawsuit, I believe. Kind of, even though the, the Department of Justice is involved, it's more about money. There is a criminal investigation potentially that is also ongoing. So I want to make sure that I'm not only focused on this at hand, and so 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 I can have someone like it dead. Just so you know, that really was annoying. Anyway, <laughs> the operators of the vessel that destroyed Baltimore's Key Bridge in March have agreed to pay nearly $102 million for costs stemming from the federal response. The Department of Justice announced Thursday under the settlement owners and uh, the owners and operators of the Dolly vessel, the Singaporean corporations, Grace Ocean Private Limited and Synergy Marine Private Limited will pay a hundred one million nine hundred eight uh nine hundred and eighty I'm sorry nine hundred eighty million you know I love numbers to resolve civil claims brought uh, against them by the Justice Department in September the federal prosecutor said ABC News has reached out to the corporations for comment the civil probe is separate from the still ongoing criminal investigation by the department into the events that led to the vessel's collision with the bridge. So there'll be more news coming in this, of course. Uh, but a quick recap. I know I don't always do this. I know I should. Uh, the container ship Dolly struck one of the piers on the key bridge early on the morning of March 26, causing the bridge to collapse and killing six construction workers who were filling potholes on the span. Two other workers survived the incident. The crash affected entry into the port of Baltimore for weeks as debris blocked entry for other ships. Dozens of federal, state, and local agencies responded to remove approximately 50,000 tons of steel, concrete, and asphalt from the channel and from the dolly, the DOJ said. Like, literally, the dolly in and of itself was, like, covered in, like, bridge work. It was pretty gnarly. Um, also I felt so bad. I still feel bad for like the dudes who were like, they were stuck there. They couldn't leave like the operators, like, and, and at the end of the day, like they had lost power. They were trying to make sure that this shit didn't happen. There are some more details that I've, I've mentioned before. And I actually want to try to get to at the end of this. Um, but I mean, I was, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but just because like, Oh, okay. Like I had heard that the, um, owners of this, like, yeah, we intend to like have our, our, our truth in court, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, we'll, we'll say our piece there and then they make the settlement, which I, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I get it. Like if you're able to say, hey, we can come to a conclusion here so we don't have to go through this and the number is big enough for both sides, then like, OK, I guess. Um, but I did want to get to this uh, last part here, I guess. I know I'm kind of zooming through it. A preliminary report released by the agency in May found that the Dolly experienced two power blackouts while docked. 10 hours before the collision that toppled part of a bridge span. So that's, that's definitely relevant. There's definitely a potential chance there that like, Hey, despite the fact that it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm with the workers on this shit. Like I get it. You're just trying to get to from point A to point B. You're just trying to do your fucking job. You know, you don't want to lose your fucking shit, you know, but like if there's a quote unquote right thing here and it's like, Hey, Maybe this this isn't seaworthy. We're you know we're talking about we're still trying to push it. You know that's the same thing of like going out with bad brakes and then your your shit goes down and it's like, well yeah man you are responsible for this accident because you're in charge of your brakes and it's like but I live in a capitalist society that doesn't really work as much as I would like it to I I, I don't think that plays you know I don't think my lawyer is gonna let me use that defense, but um that is where I'm gonna leave it for today. 
Yeah, because once again, you know, I feel like my my voice is bottoming out. We, we've made it to the end, I'm going to say, and that is why I leave my sources. So you can always just check my work if you want, or you can tell me once again how wrong I am in the comments. But I would prefer if you hit up my Discord, because I have a Discord, believe it or not. I think it's in at least a Spotify bio or something like that. You can find it. You can hit me up anywhere. You can hit up my DMs. You can hit up my podcast DMs. I'm there. By all means, I'm ready to yap about the news, okay? I'm yapping with random strangers in Ohio about this shit. I will talk to you. Believe it or not, I will. I am the podcaster that will do that. So you can hit me up. You can tell me. And I will try to fix the things and learn from those things and get better because that's that's a vibe for me, right? Growth is a thing. And, um, you know, there. Uh, let's see. You, you can also help out the effort. You could also just be a pal. You could also be like, hey, man, I, I see you're doing your thing, and I'm going to, like, throw you some money um patreon.com says Zan news also that gives you newsy status i will dub thee a newsy and uh with that you get a shout out at the top of the month i plug a project if you like that if you're into that if you want to be a silent donator i'm also into that you know what I, I love that um i love my quiet newsies um let's see other free ways hit me up at news one at gmail.com that's really old school old-fashioned um I would say you could send me fan mail. That'd be fun. But that's that's the only way I think I'm going to allow fan mail right now. I don't think uh, you need to know my address. And I don't have a P.O. box. So, you know, <laughs> nothing. Uh, let's see. Any of the socials, you know, you can hit me up on Elon Musk's big old app where, you know, he is more or less just being the Soros guy that he said he uh, hates so much. Um, we haven't talked about Elon Musk at all. Like literally him just saying, Hey, I'll give millions of dollars for people to just register to vote. And like, I don't know, like vote for Trump or something, but like, you know, just, just be like a registered voter and then sign up for this thing. And I'll give you like a million dollars in literally like the government's like, Hey, maybe you can't do that. Maybe that's illegal. And he's like, well, I just gave people money today. Woo. You can hit me up on that app. There you go. Um, you can do that there. Um, or Facebook, where Mark Zuckerberg is just, you know, trying to be like Jack Harlow, I guess, and like get his wife custom cars and shit and like build her statues and shit and like, you know, oh, I, I wish the, I wish Joe Biden administration didn't fuck with me. I would have loved to like share all this misinformation, but I couldn't. My hands were tied. Oh, it's crazy. That's been old side news, but like whatever. Fuck that lizard guy. Anyway, you can hit me on any of those apps. That's a thing. That's an option. But I'd really love if you subscribe to my YouTube. That's free. It's a free action, and uh, it, it does wonders for me. It makes me feel really good. Um, you know, we're at 82. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm a long way away from 500, but I'm trying to get there, God damn it. And um, one day, I think I will. And if not, I'm okay with that, because at the end of the day, Pog, we were here. But, um, you know, it would be cool. It'd be nice. I'd like it. You know, I can start maybe getting a little bit more moolah, some scratchy. But once again, it's not about that. It's definitely not about that. I've already got like my like classic like dollar. Hey, we made it. We did it thing. Like I've had that moment, you know, and I'm thankful so much for that. You know, Miss Mills, you did that. Salute to you. You were the one. You were the first. You're the alpha newsy. I always got to I always got to remember. I got I got a heart for you. Just appreciate that. But I appreciate all my newsies anyway. Um. And I appreciate all my subscribers. I appreciate all my listeners. I know I'm going hell along for no reason. Once again, I think it's the juice. I think I'm just going. I'm just flowing. But um, stop, stop. Um, I'm gonna start turning to J Cole. Um, but you yeah, know that that's it. That's where I want to leave it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for being a friend. And hopefully, I see you soon for some more good news. I love ya. Bye bye. Mwah.